It's Meet Me for Coffee, your music and entertainment podcast. This week, we got an awesome guest. He used to play in the Rob Zombie Band, but right now, he's part of Scum of the Earth. His name is Riggs. How's it going, man? Thanks for joining us. Yep, doing good. Thanks for having me. Awesome, dude. This uh, called Meet Me for Coffee. Do you drink coffee? No, I don't. Oh, man. <laughs> I keep I having guests on here who don't drink coffee, but uh, I have my coffee right now. Um, it's nice Dolce Espresso. I got an espresso. I just love this thing, man. It's kind of pound out coffees all day in my uh, Cookies for Santa mug uh, for the North Pole. Just getting ready for that. Uh, I'll be growing my beard soon. And um, so, you know, playing with Rob Zombie, it is uh, a pretty cool accolade to have and a lot of cool memories probably. Um, How did you get involved with Rob Zombie? Um, and uh, where, where did it all begin? Uh, you know, I was playing live guitar for this band, Prong, back in... 94 95 somewhere around there and prong was managed by the same management company that managed white zombie and pantera and so we just all kind of knew each other from that and would run into each other every you know now and again and then rob started working on that hellbilly deluxe album and he was working on it with a couple of the guys from nine inch nails you know there's a lot of people working on that album in the beginning. And I believe it's Danny Loner and Charlie Clauser just recommended like, Hey, just call Riggs. You know, he's not doing anything. Prong got dropped off the label around that time. And so I wasn't doing anything. And I just flew out to LA and we started hammering out songs, you know, over to this Scott Humphrey, the producer were at his house in his living room recorded that whole album you know i was there for about four months recording guitar and uh <laughs> and then just took off from there that's absolutely incredible you mentioned before um we were talking uh that the rob zombie uh project was like a whole different animal uh when you guys first started playing it live right yes yeah when we were playing it live you know I mean, it's just, it's all kind of a blur, but, you know, I flew out to LA from Arkansas and, you know, we met up in some rehearsal spot and jammed out a few songs. And and then I went over to the studio and I only, when I flew out, I only took a bag for, of clothes to last me for like, you know, three days. And I ended up being gone from home for, I think it was about 18 months because I flew out. We did that rehearsal. It seemed to, you know, everything seemed to, jive and then went over to the studio started recording guitar you know i was there for four months and then we started doing the videos the rehearsal for the tour you know it took a couple months and just hit the road and in the beginning we were mainly playing the white zombie songs and we only played i think we were playing like three of the hillbilly deluxe songs you know like dragula living dead girl super beast and the crowd was really reacting to when we played Dragula, the crowd was going crazy and we're playing, you know, Thunder Kiss and more human than human. And there's kind of standing there and Rob, you know, was uh, commenting that this is, Hey, it was like, wow, this is weird. This is a whole different crowd than the white zombie crowd. Like this is a whole different group of people. So we started phasing out the, white zombie songs and rehearsing the rob zombie songs d- during sound check every day and then slowly replacing the white zombie songs with the hellbilly deluxe songs and until there were only a couple white zombie songs <laughs> at what point did you realize you needed to bring more clothes <laughs> like about the fourth day <laughs> that's as it's pretty interesting experience man uh, i'm so happy that I get to talk to you uh, about your uh, musical experience and your career. Um, so 2003, 2004, um, things kind of, uh, you know, uh, Rob went his way and, and decided to produce some movies. Of course, he's working on the monsters now. I don't know if that's done or not, but uh, I'm really curious to see how he does on that movie. Um, you started Scum of the Earth um, and that first release uh, featured a lot of your friends, right? How how was that? It was a different experience for you to produce your your own songs and uh, and get them together with your friends. Yeah, 
yeah, it was it was a weird time. Uh, you know, like in my mind, you know, back then I was just thinking, oh, I'll be in this band with Rob, you know, forever, like my, you know, for the rest of my life is what it seemed like. And so having to start all over, I was like, oh, you know, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's so hard to get a project going. And so I just, you know, trudged along, called up some people, you know, my some friends and it's like, hey, you want to come over and play on you know, some of these songs? And I don't know, it was all kind of a blur, you know, and there was, you know, a lot of bad stuff going on at the time with like my grandparents getting sick and, you know, they're getting old and that's who I lived with, you know, my whole life. That's who I grew up with, my grandparents. And so that was fairly, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you'd say. It's just bad times, <clears throat> bad time. And, uh, but, you know, made it through, got the record done. And then, you know, we toured a lot and, you know, the ups and downs of touring and the new band and ugh, you know, it's, it's still like that. It's still, it's still not the greatest experience, you know. I, I can see you're going down memory lane now. I'm, I'm kind of taking you back. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's always good because, you know, it helps me understand um, how far the band has come, how far the individual has come. And it's very good because we can kind of vocalize it here. It's not like radio where we talk for like two minutes and it's done. It's like we get to get everything out on the floor. We get to understand the individual, get to know them better, have those down to earth conversations with people. And that's what this show is all about, man. Um, you have a new single uh ziggurats of mesopotamia now this song is about ancient aliens uh, living in the face of mars hiding on earth uh and you know exterminating humans and uh you do believe in aliens right yeah absolutely um well, what's your take on them do you think they're uh they're living on mars do you think they're living on earth or where, where, where do you think what do you think is going on yeah i know i have zero idea there's definitely around <laughs> and uh I know it's almost like how could they not be now, especially with that new telescope. What is that? The the James Webb? Yes, yes. You know, before there was the Hubble telescope, what they think there was like a hundred billion galaxies, and now they think there's two, you know over two hundred billion. And then it was man, I, I want to say it was in 2020, maybe, where it was it was all over the mainstream media, you know, Fox, CNN, all the regular crummy places and uh it said they recovered two other worldly vehicles not made on this planet you know something to that effect and you know it's like me and five other people on the whole world seem to care <laughs> and it did the story just went away I, I like, i'm wow, probably one were... of those five people brother i'm one of those you remember five that people. yeah and uh, there's an, also a documentary on uh, on Amazon uh, Prime Video. Um, it's about it's called Alien from Peru, I believe. It's about a guy, uh, he's a scientist. They found an alien in Peru. Actually, you see the body and everything, and um, it has a disc in its hand, right, like a copper disc or a bronze disc. And so anyway, this guy goes down there, really critically acclaimed scientists and does a documentary and then they laughed it off and it's like, oh, this guy, he's just an idiot and whatever like that. And then all of a sudden now they say it's true, right? That is after like discrediting the guy for uh, for a few years. And uh, it's very interesting. You got to check it out. Um, and you know what? It's uh, something for me like, as I've, it, I've encountered things like that too, right? Like down in Argentina, I saw something in the sky. I've never seen something fly without wings, you know, like, you know, a ship, you know, on its own. Um, and uh, I do think sometimes it makes me believe that they also live amongst us, right? It's that they've got to, right? They can't just be traveling back and forth. Um, the world, the word extraterrestrial means extra land, right? Right. So they could be living anywhere, right? Um, you know, it's always been a dream of mine to have somebody from the, the ancient alien show to be on my show, and uh, it, it could happen in the future, but. That'll be like some crazy in-depth conversation for hours. And uh, um, it's always cool to wonder. I mean, I guess our group of five, man, from 2010, 
has grown. So it's probably like what 20 people now. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but you know, there's uh oh man. Yeah, I mean you could just sit here and talk all day about you know aliens and you know obviously there's more than just one kind of alien out there and you know yeah i can't even get started i'll just be yapping all day but yeah i mean what was man what was that one where uh you know it was like a more modern experiment they did where they went out into you know it's not voodoo uh out of, there was some like root or something some tree that you know the witch doctor would make and give to people and they drink it and hallucinate and they think they go to this uh, other ayahuasca. the what ayahuasca i don't know but they, they but then they recreated that same experiment in the united states and just found what the drug was that was making people you know flip out and then did that kind of blind study where people came in and they gave it to them and they all had the exact same experience where, uh, you know, they, they show up in this other kind of realm. And then there's just some dude there like, Hey, we've been waiting for you. How's it going? You know, kind of. You know, so DMT. That, know, yeah, that's what it was. I know Joe Rogan's been talking about that a lot. He's really into that stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, just... They had that on an episode of ancient aliens that and I'd seen some other stuff about it in the past and that you know so that's not even like aliens that's just some other weird shit all together and you know there's just so much stuff out there i mean that's what i mean like you know 200 billion galaxies and probably you know who knows what's all out there we will never know the whole secret unless someone like comes out and tells us but um some people do know the secret and we don't know the secret of where where we came from as a civilization um you know, there's a story of Jesus and God and whatever, but like, you know, in those texts, like you, he never said that there's nothing else. Right. You know, well, he, and, and you know, I grew up with all that, you know, and I grew up going to Sunday school and going to church and, you know, the whole, the whole shebang. And, you know, I've read the old Testament, you know, I have several versions of it from, you know, just different verses of it. And, uh, I was watching the ancient aliens and they point out the very first line in the old Testament. It says we made man in our own image. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I'm like, why? And I got up and I went over to the Bible, opened up the page of the very first page, the very first line. That's what it says. I'm like, who the fuck is we, we, <laughs> I've never heard of this. We, yeah, the word we is a, uh, it's overused. Sometimes you don't, you really get confused. It's like, you know, uh, people refer to it as we or uh, the weather, you know, it's all, we's a very, very uh, overused kind of word, right? So we, we don't even know who we is. Like, uh, it, well, if you believe what the Bible says, there was like nothing. And then one dude, and then, you know, he made two other people. And then, but then, you know, it, how it goes in the very beginning, it's like God made the made everything and then made adam and eve they had two kids two sons you think that'd be the end of the story but then one son went to the next town and got married you know and just this stuff from ancient aliens that they point out and i'm like yeah what the hell that doesn't make any sense you know well there's a lot of things that don't make sense like the big bang theory a couple of rocks smacking together then we have this like you know i you know, we could also be living in a simulation. You know, a lot of uh, you know, Elon Musk says that we could be living in a simulation. There's a one out of like 100 chance that we're living in a, in a simulation, maybe, or yeah. one in one million chance. But how does he know that, right? Yeah. So, it's, I mean, my favorite story is the the Anunnaki. You know, that's yes, that's really a, a good one that's been around for, you know, some of the earliest stories that they can even find on Earth. And. And that's just flat out like, you know, the Anunnaki came down from where, like freaking Sirius B or something and spliced their DNA with a bunch of Neanderthals and made humans. And it's, pretty, you know, it's just cool stuff. It's just, you know, it's interesting stuff. And 
and touring around the world, you know, something that I run into a lot is people and and even like groups of people. They have these like organized groups all over the world that are, you know, like anti-alien and the pro-alien. You know, it's just like with politics or anything else, you have to the far this way, the far that way. And you know, they try to get me to join their groups and stuff, especially over in you know, like Western Europe, I run into a lot of this. And there's some crazy stuff. I mean, I can sit here and talk all day some of the pictures and things they bring and try to convince me to join their side, their group. Well, we should start an alien podcast. I think that would be pretty cool. You know, we'll call it, call it uh, five guys, two, two, two of the five guys. Um, <laughs> But yeah, like it's insane, man. So Scum of the Earth, uh, this is the obviously the first single um, in quite some time. And there is an album coming or no? Uh, I don't know. It seems like the, at least for me, the the album days are kind of over. You know, it's it's kind of weird because you run into people all the time and they are used to getting albums and they still want you know whole albums but the way everything goes with the streaming it just you know it's just release one song and a video for every song you put out instead of you know put out 13 songs and just do a video for one or two songs and you know move on this way everybody gets to hear all the songs on the streaming services and whatnot that is true. Um, you guys going to be playing any more shows coming up? Like, what's the deal? Like, is uh, is this going to be a, a full on tour? Or are you guys going to come up to Canada? Or uh, I don't know about coming to Canada. They were <clears throat> talking about booking a little short, maybe two week run in October, going up through Halloween or some, you know, somewhere around there. If if we can get it together by then. It's pretty cool, man. I, I I I applaud you, man. There's uh there's some really cool tracks you guys have. Um, you know, just checking it out over the last few days and uh, listening to it on your Spotify and you know, obviously like um supporting the band is, is something that I love to do. Um like we mentioned um um in other conversations, Ziggurats of Mesopotamia, that artwork, I gotta have it, man. Like I don't really get um too crazy about artwork anymore but that that thing just is something that we put on my wall for sure um my friend Riggs, thank you for uh, joining us on meet me for coffee um any last words you want to tell people uh, about your band uh where to find you guys and uh you know it how can they help you yeah i mean you know you just check us out all the usual places facebook instagram youtube it's all scum of the earth and yeah you know if you if you're into the ziggurats of Mesopotamia, there's a song released before that during the shutdown called Bigfoot and the Armies of Puma Punku that's kind of along the same same lines as that one. And we did a video for that. You know, you can check that out on the YouTube channel. And that one has, you know, Bigfoot and aliens and, you know, wow. some weird shit in that video. <laughs> who, who does your artwork for, for, for these singles? Uh, it just varies. You know, this one was done by this dude Wolfgang down in South America. He's the guy who made the animated video for Ziggurats. And I just sent him the lyrics to Ziggurats, and he just came up with all that on his own. So I didn't really have much input. He just took the lyrics and ran with the idea, and it just kind of came together real quick. Well, sometimes that's just the best because like i'm sure you have other things to worry about and it, and you know thinking about things like that like i know for my show it's hard to produce it it's hard to you know do social media it's hard to do all this stuff like if you just have someone just kind of takes the rain it, it gets the weight off your shoulder some way shape or form and it actually helps you out um yeah it looks awesome uh, and and uh definitely like wolfgang like props to you man like uh, that's definitely a skill that a lot of people want um to have on their music videos and and their videos man well thanks a lot Riggs. this has been great yeah. let's do it again soon man all right yeah and if anybody's interested in 
you know, having him do something for you, you can look him up at the Drone and Con films and just send him a message and, you know, that's that, that easy. That's <laughs> awesome.